Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe uh, so that I am further encouraged to make future videos I'm trying to monetize and that's been going super well. Thank you so, so much for the uh, subscriptions. Uh, just don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So I've been waiting for quite a while to make this video. This is something I've been looking forward to for a rather long time, I'd say almost two months. And I've been waiting on some things to arrive and have been waiting on some, some obviously some packages to come in and, and some uh, parts of what I'm about to show you today to finally make their way to my doorstep. So today I'm going to be talking about this plank keyboard. So um, as it actually says here on the back, this is the uh, Mastrop um, OLKB uh, keyboard. So this is the Mastrop plank and uh, it's super, super cool. So this mechanical keyboard is USB-C uh, is the connection, so super neat. You can use it with a whole bunch of your other cables. Uh, but that's not the only cool thing about this. We're gonna be talking about a lot of uh, really interesting facets of this board. First of all, um, it is a 40% keyboard. And so obviously that means that it is missing some of the keys that you might ordinarily expect on a keyboard, even on my Moonlander, which is a 60% or, or thereabouts, the 40% the obviously has less keys even than that. So you'll have to get used to the new layout and you'll have to get used to the layer switching keys, which are um, right next to the space bar. And I actually haven't gotten too used to these um, yet. I just got this a little less than a week ago and I haven't had a lot of time to actually type on this board yet um, as I actually just finished putting it together a few days ago because my key switches finally made their way to my doorstep. So the really cool thing about this keyboard is that you actually get to put this thing together. So it comes in a kit. It has all of the parts that you need to put this keyboard together in the kit. So it comes with the aluminum case, which you're seeing here on the outside. You can get that in, I believe, six different colors. It also comes with the key plate, which is um, Cherry compatible. So if you're like me and you love uh, Cherry MX keys uh, or key switches rather, this uh, board is compatible with that. So the, the key plate is compatible with those key switches. There are also a few other key switches it's compatible with, but I would recommend you go on Mastrop and actually look that up yourself just to make sure that your key switches are compatible. You can uh, go to the link in the description of this video where I will link to the Mastrop uh, plank keyboard, although know that yes, it's on mass drop, so it's possible it won't actually be available for purchase at the time you're watching this video, but it should come back, um, you know, into uh, into flux or onto the marketplace soon. Obviously, it does come with the PCB, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. It's QMK compatible, so you can program this thing um, any way you like with the layers. Not quite as nice as Oryx, uh, but that's just because I'm super familiar and that's just my opinion because I'm super familiar with the Oryx software and I really love the way it does things. But I'm sure I'll also get used to doing things uh, with the QMK um, firmware and, and writing all that to the, the plank board. And it does come with its own, Q, uh, I believe they're called acute uh, keycaps. So that's what, you're, that's what you're seeing here and I'll do some um, close-up uh, pans of, of those keycaps so you can check them out. They're, they're super cool. Uh, the printing on, on top of them, um, the, uh, the colors that they give you, all very, very cool, uh, very cool stuff. So let's go through the steps of actually putting this thing together. Um, and it was so much fun for me to build that I figured I would kind of walk you through the process. I know there are a lot of other tutorials out there, but I figured, you know, it wouldn't be a full video with this particular plank if I didn't walk you through the process of building the kit. So the first step is to connect the space bar stabilizer um, or stabilizers, depending on your setup or configuration, how you want to set this thing up. Um, but I set it up with a single space bar right here. And so you'll want to connect that to your PCB. So that's the, that's the first step is to make sure that that gets connected uh, on the correct side of the PCB. And you can look at the picture I have to uh, show you where that gets connected. Next, you want to make sure you have the correct side up. And this is actually probably better placed um, before this particular step, but um, on either case, you'll want to make sure that you have the right side up. 
Uh, that messed me up when I was first looking at this because I was trying to plug my Cherry MX keys into the board and it wasn't working and I was like, oh, what's wrong? I had it upside down. So just make sure that all the components are on the bottom of the board, not on the top. So they're, it'll actually feel like you're, you're putting and resting the components on the aluminum uh, base plate. Next, what you'll want to do is actually fasten the PCB to the aluminum case using the six included screws. It's not very complicated, pretty, pretty easy to follow along and do that. Next, you'll want to decide on the variant. There are two variants for securing the uh, key switches plate to the PCB. And so you can either go with a secure or a less secure option. I went with the really secure option. Um, and you can see how I, how I did that in the uh, picture um, I have up on screen. But also there are directions that come with the board that will walk you through the other way of doing it if you don't wanna go through all that extra work. It's particularly helpful to do it the other way if you feel like you're gonna be taking the keys off the board a lot. Probably don't want the super secure way as it's harder actually to take the keys out of the base plate or out of the, the, the key plate rather. So the next step is to actually start adding your keys. So I am using Cherry MX Blues because I like that super clacky sound. Um, so you can kind of hear how that sounds. And so I, I really love to, to get my keys as loud as I can. So I'm using the Cherry MX Blues for that. And uh, you can obviously use any Cherry compatible keys. And there's also some other ones that you can find if you go to MassDraft and you look up their compatible keys. So you'll just wanna connect those all in. The um, space bar keys are a little bit different and I'm gonna show you how to do that in the picture. Not super complicated. There are some other really good tutorials about um, that will help you really get that uh, in the right spot. So if you're confused about where that goes, check out maybe a different tutorial. I might link that in the description of this video, uh, but hopefully it's pretty straightforward. The only thing is that they're going to be flipped, so they're gonna be upside down um, from the other uh, orientation of the other keys that you placed um, on any other position on the board. And after your keys are in, obviously the next step is to add in your keycaps. So there is um, a picture of this that you can find online. Um, I will most likely be showing you a picture now, and if you are following along, you can um, follow that uh, picture to get the keys lined up, and that way you have the um, uh, keys in the right place. If you're doing QWERTY, obviously this is a QWERTY layout, so if you're not doing QWERTY, you can you know pick your layout of choice. So, like I said before, this board is QMK compatible. I'm not super sure about how to do all of that yet, but I will be working on that soon. And I'll probably be releasing another video on how I'm actually using this board, the layers that I've set up, and how I'm using this in my daily workflow. The goal is to eventually use this with my iPad. So I know a lot of people are taking the Plank keyboard and their iPad, and using them to uh, work on the go. So if they move around a lot, if they just need a change of scenery, instead of trying to lug your laptop um, and maybe your laptop's really big or you know you have to plug it in. Uh, a lot of times my iPad battery is actually a lot better than my laptop simply because my laptop's running servers and a couple different things um, that I use for uh, dev work. So maybe I would want to just remotely log into my computer from my iPad and do my work that way. Um, that's certainly an option for you to do. So uh, a lot of that stuff I'm planning on doing with the Plank keyboard because I hate the on-screen keyboard of the iPad. Um, but uh, I haven't gotten around to setting that up yet, so I'll probably have a separate video showing you how I've set all of that up. All right, so until then, thank you so, so much for watching. A little bit of a brief introduction to the, the OLKB um, Mastrop Plank keyboard. It's a really, really neat keyboard from what I found so far. I'm actually quite a fan of it. I thought it'd be a little trickier to type on, but it's actually not terrible. And I'm really looking forward to getting the layers set up on that. So if you have suggestions on um, setting up the layers, like how to do that, if you have um, particular layers that you're a fan of, please leave them in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. I'm looking forward to reading those. And as usual, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Check out some of my other videos on the Moonlander keyboard. And also I have a series, very short series, on learning the Haskell language. So if you're interested to see what it looks like to go from uh, programming with JavaScript to programming in Haskell for a little bit, you can check out my struggle in those three videos. And if you're interested, 
Uh, if I get enough likes and enough comments, I might actually continue with that because I have been learning a little bit more Haskell um, and making those videos has certainly kept me accountable to that schedule. So again, thank you very much and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the comment section and we'll see you in the next video.